Welcome, Wargamers, to the rife with greenskins field of the Mortal Realms, because today we're talking about a story that comes straight out of the Auric War Clans Battle Tome that I really like, as it brings together two of my favorite factions and essentially reminds us why the greenskins are so cool. When I say greenskins, I mean a combination of the Auric War Clans collectively, but also probably factoring in a lot of the Gloom Spite Gits and its various sub factions. The orcs are always so much fun to talk about because they're this fantastic mix of entertaining but also a deep scariness when it comes to their ability for combat. We're going to talk all about that today. Really quickly before we jump into the story, I just want to say if you are looking to save money on your purchases and your hobby, please consider using my affiliate link in the description down below for Not Just Gaming. They offer 30% off all Games Workshop products as well as tons of discounts on all other stuff like painting and hobby supplies, all kinds of cool brands there. It saves you, like I said, 30%, saves you money, and then goes a long way to supporting me as a content creator, so thank you so much to everyone who has already used that link. Me, my cats, my wife, we all thank you so much. And with that, let's get to our story of the day, which is the Greenskin Wars. Archeon the Everchosen sees the irrepressible vigor of the Auric race for the threat that it is. He tasks one of his most trusted generals, Darkhorn the Devourer, to scour the Auric menace from the realm of beasts. Untold number of Orcs are cut down, but always more appear to take part in the joyous slaughter. At Splitbone Pass, the bodies of the Chaos Warriors pile so thickly that entire valleys are filled to the brim. In eastern Lendu, the chasm overlooked by the Sundeath Caves becomes the site of a three-week-long massacre centering around the greatest rain of steel from the Death Spikas war machines ever seen. Through low cunning, matchless brawn, and irrepressible high spirits, the orcs retain their dominance of Gur. Archeon refocuses his efforts on the War of Bones, which will be over in Chayish, while Darkhorn's skull is used to decorate the ramparts of the Varenspire, a fitting punishment for his failure. So we got a lot to talk about here. First off, Archeon, master of delegation skills, gives our hero a dark horn to the devourer, an impossible task. I want you to tame a, a, a realm that's fundamental aspect and inhabitant is like wildness. That's just a crazy ask. I do also like that the Ossiarch Bone Reapers did the same thing. Just why don't you just go to Gur and just, you know, just conquer it. They have a little bit more longevity as they can rebuild themselves, literally, but the Chaos Army that is sent had to have been colossal in nature. It says it fills valleys and chasms and all these things with the dead, which is probably why there's so many skulls and bones on all the bases of Games Workshop's models. It's probably all from this particular story. But it also highlights a fundamental misunderstanding, right? The, the book actually, I think, praises Archaon a bit, right? He sees this type of force and this presence in Gur as being a direct challenge to his total control. And he's accurate in that. He sees it for what it is, which I think is like, you know, a lot of people will be like, oh, these are kind of just a form of wild animal and kind of breeze over. No, the orcs are can be a coordinated threat. So we need to address it with all seriousness, which is a credit to him. But then fundamentally does not understand the scope of what he's asking. First, in this book, it's kind of unclear where orcs come from in the first place, so the idea that Archeon would have some secret knowledge is just not there. So to me, he doesn't even fully understand his enemy, so when he sends in his personal armies, led by Darkhorn, he's just gonna figure it out. And what he figures out really quickly is that if you bring a colossal army into Gur, you enter into a food chain that you are nowhere near on top of. Because an army activates and, and functions as a single unit. They are a predator unto themselves. They just eat other armies and all the food that they can find and drink all the usable water, that kind of stuff. But what Gur does when it sees a predator is find something bigger to hunt it. The orcs are drawn to it because there's a fight to be had. It's almost like, I don't know, in a way you could think of the orcs as the white blood cells of the realm. They just kind of coagulate and glob onto anything that could threaten it because they are a predator seeking out prey. 
And so the longer this Chaos army is there, the more it pulls things towards it. Continents want to consume it. All the warbands around in earshot are flocking this way. Rumors are spreading of a Chaos army and everyone gets really excited. So imagine like, you know, I'm in the US. Uh, imagine if someone in Nebraska said, hey, I found something cool. And then literally everyone from every point of the United States of America started running. Like not in a car, just got out of their cars and just started on foot running towards the center of the country, roughly Nebraska. That's pretty much what just happened and this army shows up. All that to say, you probably last a while, you know, taking off the local residents, but all of a sudden, there's going to be more than you can deal with, and it doesn't stop coming. This is actually something that's lightly mentioned in the book Dominion by Darius Hinks. I believe uh, someone makes a reference to like how they traditionally deal with orcs is you try to have light skirmishes with small armies to draw out the leader, and then you strike down the leader and you shatter the tribe. Which is a stark contrast from just marching, you know, the army of Armageddon into the doorsteps of a place that you do not control. Now, interestingly enough, it's mentioned that a lot of this has to do with uh, the continent of Lendu, which we do have a map for. It is over on the eastern side when we're looking, uh, sorry, the western side when you're looking at the Thondia map. Uh, it's kind of a continent away, and it is also near the location of where Beastgrave is. So this is a hub of all kinds of crazy, I don't know, gurish magic and stuff. So like the thought that they were going to move an army in and just conquer all the orcs is ridiculous to me. I think this is a great job of pointing out, I mean, the, the strengths, but also still the hubris of Archaon, right? He understood the threat. He sent in his best men, which is a reasonable response, but his ask of what he was asking them to do was, was completely unreasonable. Whether or not he knew how unreasonable it was is up to debate. One of the things I do like, though, is that Archeon does assess the situation at some point, right? Once, once Darkon fails, he takes a look at Gur and is like, this is a place of madness. So he just focuses on what we now know as acquiring the Realm Gate uh, to Gur, which is stuck inside the maw of a giant worm that exists in the realm. In the Age of Chaos, they were able to basically build fortresses on the back of monsters and chain that Realm Gate up. So that was an important asset just to have any loose ends that go into the eight points. But beyond that, Archeon did not do much in Gur because at this point he's realizing, well, if I send an organized force in, it just gets dismantled, right? I mean, whatever Darkhorn took with him uh, to fill continents, divides, and valleys, like with dead corpses, must have been quite quite a resource-intensive uh, thing he did. So Archeon's like, well, if I can't conquer it with that, at least I know my opponents won't be able to as I you know, go to attack them. And hey, if they do, more power to them. It just bleeds them dry and gur rather than anything else. So he's at least content with the realm gate closed, or at least in his control, that it's going to be fine, right? This is no longer an active threat to me. And if my enemies want to try to do something there, I at least can confirm that it's going to suck for them as much as it sucked for me. So it's going to be fine. And he just redirects his efforts elsewhere. Which, to be honest, is, is probably really fair. It says he goes over to the War of the Bone, so he's going down to Shayish, and this is essentially where he strikes down Nagash, I believe. Which, when Age of Sigmar first begins, he is asleep, and then is brought back from the brink. And so let's talk about why this story is cool. What makes it very simple and straightforward. One of the things that it, it pictures to me is both the nature of orcs, and also of Gur. Because... Like I said before, when Archeon sent an army in to Gur and is like, tame it, you're not just sending an army to conquer a piece of territory. It's a force of nature. Like that that uh, unbridled craziness and wildness and bestial natures of things, like that is a fundamental part of what the realm exudes. Also remember that any chaos warrior sent there will slowly start to be affected by the realm. They will start to break rank. They will become more feral. So while the plan is flawed from the beginning, they don't understand what they're dealing with. As I said before, when you enter into Gur, you insert yourself into a food chain, and the assumption of the Chaos Lords, with all their arrogance and, you know, all this supreme display of devotion to their dark gods, is telling them, I am going to be at the top of this food chain, no problem. But the truth is, Gur has so many horrors and surprises for you, you never are. And that can look like a lot of different things. It could be a massive underground Charybdis coming up and eating your entire faction for lunch. It could be continents falling off as they're being hunted by the ocean shelves. 
It could be a bunch of crazy orcs that get together and embody one large predator. That's what the bone splitters do. They move in formations that, if you were to look at it from a satellite, look like a giant beast snatching its jaw around its enemy. Like these things, it's all about being the biggest predator. And the assumption that you're on top when you walk into Gur is the beginning of folly. And I, I think that's why Gur speaks to me so much. At least it always did before. Like I've been wanting them to go to Gur pretty much ever since the Realm Gate Wars started. War, uh, Gur and Shaman are my favorite realms. And for Gur, it's because it not only like survived the Age of Chaos, it, it actively thrived. It created the Iron Jaws. It made them meaner and sharper because, again, everything that went in there thought it was going to be the Alpha Predator. And what does Gur do? It, it rises to the occasion. It gives you something bigger, meaner, scarier. To the point where you either self-destruct by trying to conquer it, or you just have to wipe your hands off and just take the loss, which is what Archeon ultimately did. I'm just going to refocus somewhere else. It, this seems stable enough for my liking. Gur's like, okay, we'll come back if you ever want to have fun again. And for that, I think it's an astoundingly interesting story because it gives us a depiction of like, not only is Archeon happy and willing to spend what is, I assume, tens of thousands, if not millions of lives, but is also clean minded enough to go like, that's not working and then just go somewhere else. It's a little lot a bit callous, you know? And I'd love to see some historical stuff like, I don't know if they'll ever do GHBs that have a narrative section again, but I would like some stories that are historical settings again, because like the older school General's handbooks used to do, but set what you know, it's called the Greenskin Wars plural. Like, this is a massive military campaign over an extended period of time. Like, show me those battles. They might all be chaos versus orcs, but that's kind of like the whole thing with some of these self contained box sets. Yeah, give me one of those, right? Just chaos warriors with the new sculpts coming out in January and a whole bunch of orc stuff. Whatever you want to get rid of off the shelf. You got some bone splitters, some cruel boy, just throw it all together. And then give me a little bit of a story, a background, and, and some missions that string it all together. If you live in an area where it's just you and a buddy and one of them plays orcs, why not? Why not do the Green Skin Wars? If you thought of something like that, I would love to hear about it. Tell me your thoughts about this in the comments down below. Do you think Archeon was smart? Was he an idiot? Was he somewhere in between and a little bit of both? It's kind of where I tend to lean to. He's an arrogant, smart person, which distorts his perspective in some ways. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave them in the comments down below. And if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to the channel because it does help with the uh, other algorithm gods that exist. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and I'll catch you next time. Happy Wargaming.